good morning students welcome back to your english literature class in the previous session we had started reading the chapter a stranger walks into town from hedward english trail today we will continue with the same so students by the end of this video you will be able to express story in your own words meanings of difficult words and phrases and answer the related questions now students open your book at page number 42 that is chapter number 5 a stranger walks into town so students so far we have read that a man was traveling on foot and entered a town of dignity citizens stared at him because of his wretched appearance he was carrying a soldier's knapsack and was wearing a long beard and was dusty all over he looked like he had been walking all day and seemed tired the students will do the rest of the word meanings so 30 second word is quarter 15 minutes 33rd countryside an open land outside a town or a city 34th in a small hotel 35th gaily happily 36th blazed burn brightly 37th superintending watching something carefully 38th wagoners driver of a horse wagon 39th apartment a flat 40th adjoining next to 41st lodging staying at a place 42nd glance a quick look 43rd knapsack a jute or a canvas bag 44th retained to be able to keep something 45th scrutinized examining or studying very carefully 46th worthy that should receive respect 47th margin the blank area near the side of the edge of a page 48th entrusted made responsible for something 49th capacity ability to do something 50th scullion a servant assigned the most essential kitchen task 51st lackey a servant especially a man servant 52nd immersed deeply involved with something 53rd unfolded to open out something that was folded 54th reflections an image of something seen in water or mirror 55th serene peaceful or calm 56th resumed begin again 57th tranquility quiet and peaceful 58th stable a place where horses are kept 59th retorted gave an angry and disrespectful answer 60th loft a room directly under the roof of a house now students we will do the phrases fifth is for a while kuch samay ke liye sixth bent his steps towards the inn us saray ki taraf kadam badhaye seventh to remove his knapsack apni peet se canvas thala utarna eight for the wagoners chakra gaadi chalane walon ke liye next ninth whispered a word in the scullion's ear knocker ke kaan mein phusphusaya tenth set off on a run tezi se kaam par nikal gaya now students let's continue with the reading on arriving at the corner of the rue pochevot he turned to the left and directed his steps towards the town hall he entered then came out a quarter of an hour later a gendarme was seated near the door on the stone 
the man pulled off his cap and humbly saluted the gendarme so now the man has arrived at repochewood okay so where did the stranger draw his steps on arriving at the corner of repochewood on arriving at the corner of the repochewood the stranger turned to the left and directed his steps towards the town hall then he came out 15 minutes later then he saw a gendarme now where was a gendarme seated a gendarme was seated near the door of the town hall on the stone then the man removed his cap and saluted the gendarme students the next is the gendarme without replying to his salute stared attentively at him followed him for a while with his eyes and then entered the town hall so here how did the gendarme react to the stranger's salute the gendarme didn't reply to the stranger's salute but stared attentively at him followed him for a while with his eyes and then entered the town hall the next is there then existed at d digne a fine inn at the sign of the cross of colbas so here the where was the inn situated the inn was situated at digne at the sign of the cross of colbas and it was the best inn in the countryside coming up to the next the man bent his steps towards this inn which was the best in the countryside he entered the kitchen which opened on a level with the street all the stoves were lighted a huge fire blazed gaily in the fireplace the host who was also the chief cook was going from one stew pan to another very busily superintending an excellent dinner designed for the wagoners whose loud talking conversation and laughter were audible from an adjoining apartment so children he entered the kitchen now what did the stranger see on entering the kitchen of inn the stranger saw that all the stoves were lighted and huge fire blazed gaily in the fireplace now the host himself was the chief cook what was the host doing the host was going from one stew pan to another and he was checking the quality of food being cooked the food was being cooked for the wagoners who were staying at the inn they were talking loudly and their laughter could be easily heard from the nearby apartment so children who are wagoners here wagoners are the drivers of horse wagon so they must have come to the inn in wagons that's why they have been referred to as wagoners next the host hearing the door open and seeing a newcomer enter said without raising his eyes from his stoves what do you wish sir now students the host whose name is jacquin lebarre asked him what do you wish sir without even looking at him food and lodging said the man nothing easier replied the host at that moment he turned his head took in the traveler's appearance with a single glance and added by paying for it now the man replied food and lodging so what was the initial reaction of the innkeeper towards the stranger's request the innkeeper turned his head took in the traveler's appearance with a single glance and said getting food and lodging was easy but by paying for it now students uh, tell me what do you think that made the innkeeper say that the stranger would get food and lodging by paying for it so when the innkeeper looked at the wretched appearance of the stranger he might have thought that the stranger won't be having any money to get both food and lodging therefore he said that the stranger could have both by paying for it next 
The man drew a large leather purse from the pocket of his blouse and answered, I have money. Now, who is this man? The man is Jian Veljian. Now, what did he take out from his pocket? He took out a large leather purse and he said that he had money. Next, in that case, we are at your service, said the host. The man put his purse back in his pocket, removed his knapsack from his back, put it on the ground near the door, retained his stick in his hand and seated himself on a low stool close to the fire. Now children, the owner of the inn agreed to serve him because he had money. So, the man put his purse back into his pocket, removed knapsack from his back and put it on the ground near the door. Holding a stick in his hand, he sat on a low stool near the fire in order to warm himself. Next, D. D here is Digne. Digne is in the mountains. The evenings are cold there in October. But as the host went back and forth, he scrutinized the traveler. Now children, we had already been told that the host was supervising the food being prepared. As he was moving about, he continued to examine this traveler, that is, Jian Veljians. Will dinner be ready soon? said the man. Immediately, replied the landlord. Now here, Jian Viljian asked the host if the dinner would be ready soon and the landlord replied immediately. Next, while the newcomer was warming himself before the fire with his back turned, the worthy host, Jacqueline Labarry, drew a pencil from his pocket then tore off the corner of an old newspaper which was lying on a small table near the window. On the white margin, he wrote a line or two, folded it without sealing and then entrusted the scrap of paper to a child who seemed to serve him in the capacity both of scullion and lackey. Now, Jacqueline Labarry, host and the owner of the inn, was suspicious of the stranger, that is Jean Veljins. He took a newspaper, tore off the corner of it and with a pencil from his pocket, he wrote something on a white margin. Then he folded the piece of paper and gave it to a boy who served him as a servant. The servant who also performed the most menial kitchen tasks. Next. The landlord whispered a word in the scullion's ear. And the child set off on a run in the direction of the town hall. So here, Jacqueline Labarry gave some instructions to the child servant in his ears. And child went in the direction of the town hall. It appears he had sent that boy for some work to town hall. Next, the traveler saw nothing of all this. Once more, he inquired, Will dinner be ready soon? Immediately responded the host. Now children, how can we say that the traveler was very hungry? Yes, he was very hungry because he kept on asking, Will the dinner be ready soon? And how did the landlord answer? Immediately. Every time he answered by saying, Immediately. Next, the child returned. He brought back the paper. The host unfolded it eagerly like a person who is expecting a reply. He seemed to read it attentively, then tossed his head and remained thoughtful for a moment. Then he took a step in the direction of the traveller, who appeared to be immersed in the reflections which were not very serene. Now children, soon the child returned, he brought back the paper and the host, Jacqueline Labarry, took the paper and eagerly opened it. It appeared that he had written a question on it and was expecting a reply to it. So, he read it very attentively. Then he tossed his head 
and thought for a moment. Then he moved towards the traveller who was lost in some thoughts which were not very serene. Next, I cannot receive you, sir, said he. The man half rose. What? Are you afraid that I will not pay you? Do you want me to pay you in advance? I have money, I tell you. So, Jacqueline Le Marais went to Jane Valjean and told him that he could not allow him to stay in his inn. Jane Valjean was shocked, so he half arose, that is, he stood up a little and he assured the host that he had money and if he wanted the money in advance, he could give him the money. Next, it is not that. What then? You have money. Yes, said the man. And I, said the host, have no room. So, from this conversation, it is very clear that though Jane Wilgen had the money, but Jacqueline Labarre did not want that he should stay in his inn because he said that he had no room available. The man resumed tranquilly, Put me in the stable. I cannot. Why? The horses take up all the space. So here, Jane Wilgen became a little calm and he said if he did not have any room, then he could make him stay in the stable, which is meant for horses. But he refused to give the space in the stable also. Why? Actually, he did not want to give him space. He gave the excuse that all the space had been taken up by the horses. Next, very well, retorted the man. A corner of the loft then? A truss of straw. We will see about that after dinner. Now, Jane Wilgen wanted a place to take up the rest. He was ready to stay in the corner of the loft, that is, room under the roof of a house. It means he was ready to stay anywhere where the space was available. So students, this brings us to the end of today's session. Now you have to reread the pages, that is 41, 42 and 43 and revise the word meanings. Thank you.